A Journey into the Unknown Chapter 112 In the beginning the word became flesh, and only now is the flesh reflecting the word in small, incremental steps. That's how long creation takes, and how patient the creator of all of everything really is. This is the time when we start to see the fruits of our labor. This is when humans start to awaken to the fact that there is much more here than meets the eye. Suffering was originally designed to steer wayward souls back onto the great highway of love. But it became so cavernous and so generational that it became cancerous and not merely correctional. Suffering was meant to be a gentle tap on the shoulder and instead became a way of life. Humans actually became so accustomed to it that they increased their tolerance for it. Some have an immeasurable capacity for suffering. They think that this is how life is supposed to be and they pass this mistaken belief on to their children. This is why transformation has taken this long. There is great comfort in the devil you know. Why open up to revolutionary change if you are comfortable? The events that are about to happen now are designed to cause ordinary, everyday men and women of all walks of life to question this stance. The question many will start to ask is, who and what are we? And what does we really mean? Chapter 113 As it stands now, and as it has always been, when you see someone you know, or someone you don't, you judge them as a friend, foe, or neither, yet. In the future, when your soul has reached maturity, and your soul's divinity permeates every fiber of your being, then you will see others as different reflections of yourself. There may be a delineation of differing levels of maturity from one soul to another, but that's only discernment. Relationships between a mature soul and a developing soul will be entirely friendly, supportive, and loving. There will not be enough fear present to see anyone as a foe. It won't be possible. Mature souls are not competitive, so no one will be less than. The focus moves from survival, from me first, to entirely being about sharing and serving. This, of course, will produce a world that is so extraordinarily different from the current one that it will make everyone share a collective gasp. Please know that I am not describing some fairy tale or fantasy utopia. I am describing a condition 
that is yours to enjoy right now, in this moment. See yourself flooded with light and allow the clouds to dissipate. In this moment, you are at one with God and with all of creation. This is unity. This is when there is no you, separate and alone. There is only God, in service to God. Light up like this as often as possible. Over time, this new identity will gently shine away the old one. Please let this transformation happen. One person at a time, being consumed by the light of God, will produce the new earth. In love. Chapter 114 Atonement is an old-fashioned or old-school term, but its true meaning is very applicable to today's modern world. It signifies the end of the separate self and being at one with Source. It's when God looks like you, it's when every thought and every movement reflects the will of God, which is unconditional love. It's when there are no conflicting thoughts to love. It's when there is no separate will. It's when you are in the middle of the deepest part of the ocean and there is no land in sight. The water is what sustains you. It's when you don't remember when you didn't live like this. Those years, decades, and lifetimes of struggle. It's when you have stopped looking for a God to connect with. Because you have discovered that you are a magnificent part of God. And it's been this way all along. It's just that you didn't know it. Atonement is the end of the hero's journey. Atonement is crossing the finish line and turning around to cheer on everyone else still in the race. Atonement is discovering life's big, giant, and well-kept secret. Atonement is knowing that each and every person is born with the keys to the kingdom, the keys to unlock the secret, but they just can't find them. Life is designed to keep the location of the keys obscured, but atonement ensures that clarity will prevail. Here's to you, child of God. Here's to you. Job well done. Chapter 115 You can live at the top of the mountain. You can go into town periodically to get supplies and conduct business. You are aware of who is doing what to whom, and who is being blamed, tried, and imprisoned. Yet somehow, all of this doesn't affect you as it once did. You see it for what it is. And most importantly, you see through it. It doesn't have the power to move you from your peace 
as it once did. You remember conflict well. It can be surpassed. When you live at the top of the mountain, you know that there really isn't anyone to have conflict with. There are fictional characters who believe heart and soul that they are real. They will even fight to the death to prove it, if you dare to cross them. But at the top of the mountain, you have finally come to the conclusion that you aren't a character in a play, and never have been. You are life itself, giving animation to each and every character. You are part of the source of all. At the top of the mountain, you always take the high road. The low paths are seen clearly for what they are never-ending circular paths that are fruitless. Looking at the city of lights from a safe distance is a beautiful sight indeed. Chapter 116 We will help you to see the errors of your ways and begin the path to atonement if you have not already done so, or have gotten stuck in bushes with thorny elements. Life can be like that. Sometimes it seems like there is a trap around every corner, one you didn't see coming. We so desperately want to see God's offspring return to the fold and bring their human bodies and little identities with them. Now that will be a sight to behold. Each micro droplet came from God. So when it matures and returns to the father mother, it will be like an adult child coming home again. One day your soul will have children, and you will enjoy the experience of watching them change and grow, finally returning to you in the end. Then, and only then, will you know what it will be like to come full circle and to know everything from the perspective of both fear and of love. This is how love is strengthened. Bless you for your diligence. Chapter 117 Things are likely to be very messy here for a long time. There are different groups pushing contradictory agendas. Each blames the other for the problems they each see. Actually, they all have the same problem. They don't have a clue about who they are in truth. All other human problems are effects from this major misperception. We are seeking to establish a significant group of peacemakers who know the truth about identity and can help change hearts and minds about who they really are and who others are in truth. It isn't about changing how anyone thinks. It's about the cessation of thought not fixing thought by reading all of the right books about thinking the right way, 
these will never solve the conflict here. Thinking you are a body is very different from thinking you have a body. When you stop thinking you are a body, then logically, the body's attributes are no longer your attributes. They no longer dictate your membership in a group of people with the same body attributes and exclude you from groups with differing body attributes. Isn't this what racial identity and animosity is all about? Together, we can help eradicate the most vexing issue that has plagued mankind since the beginning of time. Why do they look different from us? Is a different question than why does his vehicle look different than mine? No one questions the make, model, and color of a vehicle. Chapter 118 The ancient texts predicted a time of upheaval and the return of Jesus Christ to save humanity from itself. You are in a time of upheaval, but I will not be returning in form to save you. Humanity must use my teachings to save themselves. My modern teachings went into much greater depth than what survived in the New Testament. But even those are excellent starting points. Love everyone and do not judge anyone. If you can put these concepts into practice on a daily basis, you will not only bless yourself, but you will be a great blessing to the world. Simple things like these seem easy on Sundays, but not so much the rest of the week. I did not teach to love all except those you disagree with. This seems to be a sticky subject. Love and judgment are relatively simple concepts compared to those of the false self, thoughts, and the truth about identity. These must also be taught during these turbulent times. The question remains, who is brave enough to teach them in the court of public opinion? Will you? Chapter 119 Begin again with a fresh perspective, a new outlook. Forget everything you think you know. Forget everything you are proud to know. Forget all of your hard-earned knowledge. Be an empty slate. Yesterday is gone. Let it go. It has no power over you. If you see people from yesterday today, see them as brand new people you have never met before. Don't bring yesterday's behavior, words, and attitudes into today. Today is a new gift but is rarely treated that way. People can't stop bringing the past into the present until you do. Show them the way. This is true forgiveness. And true forgiveness is total freedom. 
There is nothing to hold you back. Yesterday's failures are today's brand new opportunities to forget about it. Forget about what was said, done, not said, not done, meant, not meant, was honest or dishonest, was above board or underhanded, was true or sneaky. Forget all about it. Forget about showing them who's who and who is not going to take this lying down. Forget about being a better man and not letting them get away with it. Forget about stepping outside to settle things. Forget about you'll hear from my lawyer and see you in court. As hard as this sounds, you really don't know if it will be hard or not until you try. Why not give it an honest try? You might find that living this way suits you just fine. Go on. Give it a shot. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Here's to the new you.